Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Mr. Knight. And I'm uh, honored to have been invited to talk to you this morning. I only trust that what I have to say will prove of interest. I'm going to endeavor with the aid of some diagrams, blackboard diagrams, to review some of the most uh, outstanding events in the history of the Earth as it is recorded in the rocks and the fossils which we see within a radius of 100 miles of Laramie. Now, uh, when we approach such a grandly ordered concept of the history of the Earth, we have to leave the world of finite reality as we know it. We our sense perceptions dictate to us such things as time and space and speed and so on. And I have to admit that the finite mind simply can't grasp the meaning of time. I don't know the meaning of a million years of time. I have no way of understanding. And yet we know that time has passed not only in millions, millions but hundreds of millions of billions of years are available to it. Now our story is the record, really, of two great groups of forces which, uh, if we let this represent the Earth, one group is operating externally, attacking the surface of the exposed surface of the Earth. Uh, and had this group of forces, such as running water and waves, uh, wind, what you will, been allowed to operate unopposed. The Earth today would be spinning through space covered by a universal ocean. And all the varied, complex manifestations of life which are developed upon the land, including ourselves, would never have come into existence. Uh, we're here only because of the fact uh, that uh, there is a group of forces opposing. In fact, these forces enter the fray and emblazoned on their battle flags as there shall be no relief. I'm speaking of physical relief, not social relief. We all know that there is the earth possesses relief. The total amount of relief, however, I could put within the width of that chalk line compared to the earth as a whole. But it's very significant, meaningful, at least to land life. So there'll be no relief. Um, fortunately for us, and a host of other ones, there is a forces which are operating in opposition to these. And these we can summarize chiefly in movements of the crust. And the rise of liquid and gaseous rock forming material from deep within the earth or of volcanic emanation. And uh, related phenomena. This group of forces combine into a great cycle of erosion, transport. and deposit. In other words, while these forces create new highlands and uh, are subsequently attacked, of course, and disappear. So much for a brief summary of the story. It's the record. Now we can break down this record in various ways, and I've simplified it as much as I can. I'm going to talk of it in terms of a great play. And uh, we'll think of it in terms of acts and scenes. And I'm going to review some of the scenes, as it were, as if we had approached the Earth at uh, different times in its past history. 
So we'll start then with Act One. Now, Act One is a tremendously long act. It's known to the uh, specialist as the uh, Precambrian time. And uh, it is visible into a number of scenes. It represents 80% of all of geologic time. In other words, this act of uh, consumes starts uh, with about, uh, oh, in the neighborhood of 3,000 million years and runs up to uh, 600 million years uh, in time. MY stands for million years, uh, and uh, going from the past to the present. So I'm going to draw a series of diagrams, and we're visiting now this region as it looked. As it looked at the uh, uh, different stages in its history. It's a continuous record. Well, you have to break it up. We'll open the story then with a diagram going back to point uh, five, we'll say about 2,500 uh, million years before the present. Then we're going to have a crust and uh, see to cover this region. And this we call an unknown crust. No one has ever seen it. It's no longer. It's uh, what must have been in existence. So we'll put it down just as a question mark. Now there rose through the earth this unknown crust uh, a series of volcanoes. And they established a, we believe to be a volcanic arc. So we can have here a feeding conduit, a volcano, and uh, build up on the floor of the sea and continued to rise, reached just as we have today. We have, and uh, we have. Uh, of volcanic arc because of the day, such as the Aleutian Islands or representatives. And here we would have then a coming into being well, uh, elevated above the land, above the sea, would be a uh, volcanic outpouring giving rise to uh, more or less continuous. Now, uh, we don't know where, with regard to this story, where this occurred. That is, the position is not known. Evidence is, is not available. Now, my area that I'm going to center on here would be uh, southeastern Wyoming. We will say reaching from Cheyenne through Laramie to Saratoga and north to as far as, in other words, I'm going to just block off an area here and we'll call this uh, the uh, region in which we're going to concentrate. And we'll put Laramie uh, down here uh, near the lower part of it. In other words, most of the diagrams and, that I'm going to treat with are, will 
cover that general region of southeastern Wyoming. Now, the, this great cycle of erosion transport and deposit was in effect uh, it has been in effect a continuous, uninterrupted attack since the first rainstorm fell on the first slope and the first winds blew. Uninter a continuing uninterrupted attack, ceaseless and endless. The opposing forces are cyclic, rhythmic in their attack. They will stand the attack for scores or hundreds of millions of years, and then they rebel, and new highlands come into being, new mountains are formed. So this attack is the same attack that's going on today, and uh, the, uh, some of the lava flows continued and spilled out and covered this general region, and uh, we could say we had uh, Lava or the fragmental ejecta from the volcano, there was probably a good deal of fragmental material that was also admitted. Enduring periods, intermittency or dormancy, we could have the fragmentary debris washed down from the highlands by the into the sea and spread out, forming uh, sediments, various character. Of course, they're fine. In other words, they're built up over this region a vast sequence of lava flows uh, and uh, intermittent, embedded with uh, the came into being a vast succession of have flows following in any order we might, and the fragmental, in other words, there's a series of bedded deposits that came into being, derived, for the most part, from the highlands, although there is some lime deposits in them, which uh, suggests that possibly even life may have had something to do with simulation. So there comes into being, then, the first event. This uh, thick succession, several thousand feet thick. I don't know if anyone knows the total thickness. Hard to arrive because it's now extremely fragmentary, but uh, made up of an alternating sequence of uh, lava flows and uh, sediments. This goes on for scores of millions of years, and uh, finally we come to the rebellion point. And we set the stage for a revolution. And uh, geologically, we have revolutions, just as we have in human society. The old order goes down, and a new order comes into being. It's interesting to note that these revolutions are triggered by a restless earth. And uh, the results are that the un imbalance some way, new mountains are created, new highlands come into being, and the earth is subjected to a uh, great tangential uh, pushes, and we find that this succession of sediments now, uh, which were born out here on the seafloor, uh, is thrown into uh, compressed folds. Oh, that's 